is ostensibly a doorway to creativity, albeit a door to which a growing number of game developers have evidently lost the fucking key. <laughs> But for every Watch Dogs floor demo that fails to materialize as an actual fucking game, there's a small handful of titles that manage to slither beneath the eternally shrinking doorframe and into the waiting arms of the five fucking gamers on this whirling sapphire death orb who still give a neutron of a fuck. Enter Bound by Flame. Never heard of it? Well, you're in good company. If this game had been any more ignored at this year's E3, Sony would be selling it as a handheld. <coughs> Apart from a brief mention on the Game Failure's E3 livestream, a presentation with all the unbridled passion and duration of a preteen sexual encounter, might I add. Dear Diary, Jackpot. Bow by Flame went almost deliberately ignored at E3 2014, and that is a piteous fucking shame. Bound by Flame, you see, is the deadly premonition of RPGs. A subatomic budget that's spread thinner than the elastic on Movie Bob's G-string, the most blindingly pristine production values this side of 8mm German scat porn, and a voice cast that sounds like it was called from the aforementioned Teutonic Scheisse flick. Oh, son of a mother. Tech is wild. His cocky leash is grading my performance. I don't get upset. I get drunk. Yet somehow, through an unflagging emphasis on robust role-playing, dramatically divergent narrative forks, and easily some of the deepest weapon and armor customization and crafting in the totality of modern role-playing, by the second act I found myself utterly disarmed by its unrepentant low-rent charm. Still sketchy on the details? Rap with me, Rageaholics. Take the Witcher, remove the plagiarism and exploitative use of the female breast. Shining it up real nice. Turning that some bit sideways and sticking it straight up, Michael Cole! Now replace it with a companion system, impossibly deep crafting, weapon and armor customization, a less action-y, infinitely more tactical combat system, and, well, shittier voice acting. And yes, that is possible. What else do you need? More taint? On my word, how did you know? Yeah, I may have overshot there. In lieu of a glorified hack and slash a la Dragon Age 3 The Apology, or pure overhead tactical rpg and a la the upcoming Pillars of Eternity, Bound by Flame finds a happy middle ground somewhere between Baldur's Gate and The Witcher, and executes it with baffling competence given the five nickels and assortment of pocket length that comprises its anemic development budget. Better still, the player character can boast three distinct combat styles, each with its own unique assortment of specialized weaponry, all of which can be customized to a borderline ridiculous degree with each alteration radically affecting the weapon or armor's physical appearance as well. Spiders, how the fuck did you pay for all this? What, are you running a meth ring on the side? Selling black frame glasses to IGN's editorial staff? However you paid for it, it's refreshing as an open-air fuck. With, of all things, the soundtrack being easily one of the most refreshing elements of all. In a video game industry crammed fuller than a Chinese cemetery with subtle sonic variations on John Williams and Hans fucking Zimmer plagiarism, it's a welcome respite encountering an RPG soundtrack that doesn't sound even a little bit like Lord of the fucking Rings. Two eyes and God! Two eyes and God! Eschewing the bloated symphonic stylings and more pompous fare such as Skyrim for a richer and yes, keyboard-laden soundscape that pairs traditional instrumentation with striking electronic flourishes to profoundly atmospheric effect. Are there problems? Certainly. Although they are almost without exception relegated to shallow cosmetic flaws evidenced by the fact that many of the more shrill, negative mainstream reviews were forced to resort to some of the most ineffectual, quibbling horseshit that justified their disdain. As exemplified in particular, by Game Failure's piping fresh ladling of unbridled fucking stupid. The journey through Vertiel will take you to a few varied locales, but they feel limited and artificial. Generic paths and corridors riddle the landscape, and the maps only open up in a few scattered areas. Gosh, if only we could compare these sentiments with your review of a game that unlike Bound by Flame, most rational people actually do consider to be restrictively fucking linear. The sets change, and the locales are as imaginative and well-wrought as you'd expect, but all the fat has been trimmed. Uh... Fuck him! If you're allergic to double standards, first off, how the dick have you subsisted this long in the echo chamber of hypocrisy known as the internet? And second off, flee from mainstream reviews of Bound by Flame. Every syllable of every review, even those espousing half-hearted praise, positively shriek the words, we were not adequately paid by the publisher in a booming Christopher Lee baritone. If I've interpreted the Dead Sea Scrolls correctly, Bound by Flame is something called a middle market video game. I'm told the world was brimming with these fuckers while Cro-Magnon were still roaming the tundra 
were in Mastodon's in John McCain's second term. Consult my shameless blog. Death of the Middle Market rant for further elucidation on this topic, but the short version is this. We need more games like Bound by Flame. If a game with a sixth the budget and half the team size could improve objectively on many of Dragon Age and the Witcher's faults, well that's a team that needs money thrown at them. Fired from a fucking cannon even. It's called building a brand, people. In the days of yore, it's what took Bungie Studios from those anonymous dildos who pinched out Marathon to easily the most sought-after developers in the solar system, Midas touching themselves into economic affluence and creative bankruptcy. The cause and effect relationship is reasonably straightforward. If Marty McFly's parents don't bone down in 55, he's taken the red eye out of existence in 85. Ergo, if thanks to every mitigating factor from journalistic half-wit hive mind to publisher consolidation... It's called consolidation. That's terror. To gamer ignorance, games like Bound by Flame or its spiritual predecessor, Mars Warlogs, are flayed alive in the present? It's not that gamers are looking down the barrel of a bad future, it's that we don't fucking have one! Because the middle market titles of yesteryear are the AAA Michael Bay extravaganzas of 2014. And in case you haven't noticed, middle market titles aren't exactly growing on dialogue trees here. And before you don your rose-colored skepticals and regale us all with the rags-to-rags rebirth of indie gaming in 2014, gosh, if only I could think of another wing of the entertainment industry that went from building raw talent from obscurity, cultivating their latent abilities with long-term financial investment until they eventually achieved breakthrough success, to suddenly being fractured into the thousands of home-based, impoverished, and inexperienced indie practitioners while the dwindling cadre of surviving corporate monoliths continually homogenized their shrinking pool of vapid product to ensure the arrival of their rapidly evaporating bottom line. <laughs> That's right, Ironic Shirt Society. If you want to see the true form your indie gaming utopia of the future will take, look no further than the smoldering wreckage that was once the SS modern music industry. We've seen this song and dance before, Rageaholics. Middle market game emerges. Gaming press measures said middle market title against AAA games with 1,200 times their budget. Trigger IGN comments section, firing squad. Lather, rinse, repeat. At least repeat so long as there still is a video game industry to fucking review, that is. What brings my ass off the can is that in many ways, even judged against games that positively dwarf its development budget, Bound by Flame still stands objectively ahead. This game is bound by badass. Ass. I'm Razor Fist. God fucking speed. <laughs>